Okay, our special guest is Aisha Zouaidi. Aisha is a multidisciplinary designer based in Qatar. Her design practice and research explores the theme of home, nostalgia, childhood, memory, heritage, and Doha's rapid growth. These themes are reflective in the design collection uh, bear with me a sense of bear shaped objects including candles mirrors and screen panels igniting past childhood memories and serving as a metaphor for Qatar's present rapid urbanization Aisha's reflective installation the state of view was included in the 2018 London design biennale and her uh, central uh, midham, midham, midham design is currently on show in the National Museum of Qatar both works engage the viewer in a sensory experience by releasing traditional Tatari household scents, namely Arud and cardamom, to ignite the feeling of home and the past. Aisha was an artist in residence and curatorial assistant at the fire station Doha before becoming the director of the Qatar Museum's latest design hub, Liwan Design Studios and Labs. Aisha, welcome to Africa. Thanks for being willing to be interviewed. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you for the introduction the, the lengthy introduction <laughs> the informative introduction i'm happy to be here I'm happy to be on uh, africa and uh, happy to have you here at one okay so here's a question the question is people hate their bios and they typically hate their bios because they think that, that it's like reduce it reduces them down to some some other thing some like small icon what does your bio get wrong about you wrong yeah um What's not included in there that you're like, eh, it's not, it doesn't really capture what I'm really about. I would say maybe a big part of my work is my personality. It's more personal. It's about my personal memories. Yeah. And um, it might talk a bit about the sense, but it doesn't really give it more justice. That sense maybe is related to those memories and um, and what are those memories uh, about? Uh, mostly about my childhood memories and why it is significant in my life. Yeah. So I would say that. Okay, so this is my first trip to Qatar. I'm happy that I'm here. Um, and I've been spending the last couple of days sort of just exploring the space and trying to figure out the, the essence of Doha and you know what this place is, what this place isn't, and what this place might be in a decade or two. Do you feel like you have a good answer to that thing or is that a moving target? Do you, if you were to explain uh, Doha to like an alien and they're like, where do you live? And you're like, I live in Doha. And they're like, what's it like? What would you say? What is this place like? I would say it's a very um, dynamic and changing environment. Um, and I believe this actually inspired me uh, to research and work around memories yeah. um, because, because it is that there is a huge um, nostalgia, like personally in me, towards the past. But at the same time, there is huge excitement about what's go going to be and the future. So it's this torn feelings between, between feeling nostalgic about the past and wanting to, longing back to the past, but also. Uh, Uh, being super excited to what's what's happening. So I would say it's a it's a, a very dynamic um, future we're looking into. Yeah. So Liwan, uh, for those people who have never been here, um, it's a school. It used to be a school. Mm -hmm. What was Liwan like uh, in the 80s when you first, or 80s or 90s when you first interacted with it? Yeah, I I studied at Liwan, uh, it was called actually in Madrasat Umm al Mu'mineen for a year uh, in the late 80s. Um, I have some memories about it. Um, it was my first year at school, so maybe not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I don't remember much. Maybe maybe yeah. not that those kind of memories. Uh, but I remember I remember everything about it. I remember the signage on the doors. I remember the, the windows, the floors, the canteen. But just as a as a, a uh, in a, from a nuts and bolts perspective, what was it? Was it an elementary school? Was it a public school? Was it? It was a public yeah. uh, school, uh, a primary public school, and actually, this was my classroom, and the one we were sitting in. Yeah, right amazing. Um, it was girls only up to grade six. Um, so um, yeah, that was that was the one back then. And so, what was the oldest age? It was like up to like twelve or something like that. It, it was, uh, yeah, from five 
so grade one, five yeah. or six years old, uh, up till um, grade six. So I would say I think around uh, eight years old or nine. Yeah. Yeah. And it stopped and being in effect recently. 2005. Yeah. The younger students used to be in the ground floor and the older students um, had the classes upstairs. But why did it stop? Like, it's weird to, there is usually a really good reason to close a school. What's the, what was the sort of underlying reason? Well, schools have changed. The architectural uh, of the schools have changed. Yeah. It's more of a closed um, buildings now because of the weather. Yeah. Uh, even though before those schools like Yuan were built um, differently, they had the courtyard in the middle and it actually caused uh, some breeze to circulate within the yeah, like a court yeah, yeah, Liuan. That's how the name was inspired. Um, but um, classrooms back then had had the ACs, but the years before that, you can still see the fans on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess it's more um, about them having more functional buildings uh, yeah. for students. Is there like, do you feel like, um, or before I ask this question, what inspired you to actually venture and start this project? What was the point of starting the project? Um, I'm, I work at Qatar Museums, uh, so it was a big mission and the strategy of Qatar Museums to start a design hub uh, for creatives. And that was, we saw it coming, that was the next step for uh, QM. Uh, so there was this already planned idea to, to, to establish a place like this in a different location. Um, so um, I was assigned to take over this project. And um, I felt it was it was something that I really wanted. Um, I want. I always thought that I wanted to create sort of a movement, uh, establish something new uh, for creatives in Qatar. And I, I I took this opportunity and I applied my own my own vision as well uh, to this existing uh, idea we had. Yeah. So who were the early believers, if any, that believed immediately? Oh, amazing. Go take an old school that doesn't have great AC, that's in, um, that isn't super sleek and um, all glass and, you know, like 10 stories high. And that, who was the first person that said, I get what you're doing. This makes sense. Well, of course, it's Her Excellency Sheikh Al Mayasa Mohammed yeah. Al who is the chairperson of Qatar Museums. Um, I mean, she sets the visions and the strategy for QM. So, um, as I said, it was a, it was an existing idea set by her, and uh, she was the one who assigned the school uh, later to take uh, to host this project. Yeah. On the on the other side, who if you don't need to name names, but what is what was a really really instructive piece of criticism in the early stages of planning that uh, retrospect was like that helped you see around a corner that maybe you didn't expect They're like yeah I didn't I didn't think of that um, I wouldn't have thought of that every project needs critics helpful critics um, is there an example of that that helps sort of shape the vision as it uh, evolved well hmm. <laughs> What's the well? Many maybe in different stages. Yeah. Um, maybe having it as a co-working spaces and what it can offer. Yeah. Whether it's a co-working space or a residency, that was a question. What um, disciplines are we hosting here? And maybe we went a little bit over um, considering maybe too many disciplines. Um, we, yeah. we wanted to host more fashion, jewelry, gastronomy, and much more, which I still believe I might go back to that. Kind of so yeah, area. that's the lab part, right? Yeah, that's the lab. OK, so like, what what is included right now? Right now, I just got a tour from one of the team members, Arshi. And as I was walking around as a musician myself, I was like, where's all the music? Right? Music? Yeah, I was like frustrated. I was like, where's all the music? Where's the, where's the piano? Where's the recording studio? Where's the? And she's like, oh, yeah, 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 we don't. So you have to draw the line somewhere, right? So what, what is yeah. currently included? Well, uh, we have a leather lab, which is gel, um, yeah. and we have a, a clay lab. Okay. Uh, we have a prototype lab, and um, we want those labs to function in a very casual way. So we wanted to uh, um, 
give them operators, local operators who can um, occupy them and operate from the, those spaces. So we call them residencies, mm -hmm. uh, lab residencies. And we really want uh, those operators to be a huge part of Liwan. Uh, we built it and we, we keep on building it uh, in the future. Uh, but we want the members, the lab owners to be a huge part of it, of who we are, yeah. of the de definition of Liwan itself. So we took good care, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope, uh, selecting them. And we're really happy, really happy with who we who have joined. Uh, we also have Type Arabi yeah. uh, as a studio, as a project here, uh, who we're hosting at Liwan. And uh, Type Arabi is, an, is a project, it's an initiative uh, by VCU. Um, uh, by VCU, and uh, so we're hosting them here um, uh, to collaborate on some projects with the library, which, yeah. I, which I believe we're going there. So. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about the library a little bit. So when when we talk about schools, right? Schools typically have libraries, even elementary schools, um, but it's they also have you know uh, like sports arenas, and they also have. Uh, uh, biology classrooms. You've gotten rid of most of that stuff, but the library you kept. What's the point of keeping the library? What's the What's the thinking behind that? There wasn't that? a sport arena here. Okay, that's, <laughs> and you get it yeah. right, like a. Yeah. Well, um, I came to the school a lot when when the project first started yeah. and before the restoration. I had a desk uh, outside, and I spent a lot of time by myself just walking around. After it closed? Yeah, it so closed after, in 2005. So 2005, you would just make, you would let yourself in into this abandoned school? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, when I was assigned to to uh, to have this. Oh, project, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can not imagine just, you like <laughs> picking the lock and making your way. <laughs> no, I wasn't this homeless and like, yeah. no, I wasn't living here. Um, <laughs> in 2019, when I just got this project, I used to spend a lot of time just um, in the courtyard with a desk, my coffee, a chair, my laptop, uh, my broadband. And I would walk around those classes um, and quite wanted to be inspired of, of what existed and yeah. how to make meaning. Um, like my, my personal work is all about meaning and uh, memories. Uh, so I wanted to build on those meanings with, with this existing uh, location. We, we know there's a lot of stories around it. A lot of students uh, would love to come and see it now that it's uh, restored. Uh, but even with the architecture, um, with the objects found here, I knew there was more that we should keep. Um, yeah. So we found out that the library has an amazing collection. And what we loved most with, with the library is that it's stamped with the, the old school name. Mm -hmm. And so we thought that really gives a nice narrative. We love the illustrations in the books, the stories, the children's books. Um, these are public uh, uh, publication houses that no, more, no, no longer exist. Uh, we hope this really gives a, a beautiful narrative to what the school is. Um, and we can really, in terms of design, um, we can attract more uh, artists, graphic designers, illustrators. Yeah. And we thought it, it's, it could build up to be something really amazing. It can build up um, further on the um, visual culture, for instance. We can, we can go into that path as yeah. well. So we saw a lot of potential with, with the library. And that's why we kept the majority of the books there. What is, the, what is the partnership, as somebody who's, who doesn't live here, I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on in the culture sector, in the, in the culture and art sector in Kavod. Um, what is the relationship bet between all these entities and how does Liwan fit into the like broader ecosystem of Kavod museums? You mentioned VCU. There's a lot of moving pieces. How does this sort of fit in and what is the role that Liwan is trying to play in a broader ecosystem that has a lot of different players already? Well, we're trying to figure that out right yeah. now. Uh, VCU has been, you know, the major design hub for for over two decades. Uh, I'm a graduate from VCU, uh, yeah. so um, VCU ha ha still has the Tasmin Conference, for instance, which yeah. has been growing and very popular in the region, I believe. Uh, so yeah, VCU basically had it all, but now uh, QM is starting to to um, 
tap into design, creativity, and build this ecosystem, as well as, uh, for instance, um, I would say, share of uh, properties as well. So we are new to the to this, and we're trying to figure things out. But I, I feel like um, by practice, everything will actually fall into into place. Interesting. And so, okay, so. When you think about like a, this is going to be a left turn, but just bear with me. When you think of like a company like Facebook, right? The like their product is the people, right? The platform is just the way that they bring people in, but the product is the actual users, essentially. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that very loose uh, analogy kind of applies to you uh, at Luan, where really what you're trying to create is the community? It's not that the the leather goods that are the clay or the design or the typography that's coming out. What you're actually in the business of is building creative communities. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, well, it started other than building this this project and the concept, the strategy. Um, it's really the soul of it. Uh, of what what will the soul of Li Wan be? Yeah. And um, I knew it from the beginning that in order for design, what we need here, for instance, in Qatar, and I'm talking from my own background and experience mm -hmm. working on different projects, is that there, there's a lack of uh, um, community um, that uh, maybe is not easy to find outside of VCU. Yeah. So I would always take this dialogue with uh, faculty and friends over there. Uh, but I, I really thought this should also grow outside of, of the university at uh, BCU. And um, having Li Wan, I saw it happening here, really. Uh, I saw like-minded people gathering uh, in this space, becoming members. And um, that's really what would build the space, really. What does it mean to be a member? What, tell me, uh, explain that in very uh, detail. Like, I'm a random graduate. I'm, I'm 23 years old. I work, I work in Doha. I'm a animator. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for me to be a member here? Uh, well, um, is it our company's members or our individual members? Individual okay. members. Um, we're opening, we're launching actually in March 2022. Yeah. Uh, we're opening for the membership. Uh, it's an annual membership to use those uh, space for the studios we have here. Each studio is designed differently. Uh, some of them are more like a social place, lounge. Some of them are more like a quiet place uh, yeah. for meetings. And some of them are more of like a group working space with uh, large tables. Uh, so we designed it differently. So it, it could be a dynamic space for designers to use. And um, it could host different uh, designers, creatives, disciplines. We really wanted to attract cafe owners or restaurants owners, as I see the building of it. Uh, so I see a lot of potential and a lot yeah. of members who would love to, to be yeah. there. But it's it's just gathering the right group of people and uh, maybe perhaps starting small, but 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 all right. Okay, so before we get to the q and A, I I want to ask you, what is 2022 launching? What still needs to be done from, from now until then? What we are raising <laughs> a, a lot, lot of PR. Of yeah. Um, well, a lot. We need to, to figure a lot of things. Uh, we have the membership. We need to figure um, how we fit in with, with other projects, for mm -hmm. instance, within QM, um, and uh, how we uh, differentiate ourselves from uh, other projects as well. Uh, we're working carefully and trying to do that, um, but uh, we're quite crazy. We're quite excited because... Yeah. I mean, what I mean, we can go on and on working on it before it starts. But I mean, the the actual work really happens when we have the members. Yeah. So we're sure. excited for that. Okay. So I want to get to the quick Q and A. Um, oh, this is a beautiful library. Um, okay. So what are you reading or watching right now? No judgment. Zero judgment. What are you reading or watching right now? Okay, um, I love buying books, but I'm next to my bed right now is um, Design as Art. Okay. Um, 
quite interesting. A few stages are quite yeah. interesting. Uh, um, hopefully, I'll finish that. What am I watching? Uh, what am I not watching? Uh, well, what, yeah. I'll, I'll start with the websites, maybe, instead of mentioning the shows. Sure, yeah. Netflix, Hulu, HBO, just to mention. Is there a specific show that uh, is the like the last episode? What's the last episode you've seen? Well, Mr. Big died. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. fair okay next next question who would you love to shadow for a day past or present um i would yeah i did sorry to spoil it um well i would say the younger me interesting uh a lot of my inspiration comes from my own memories and uh sometimes I feel like, um, you know, so, some memories are quite faded and I use those, I write them down and I just wonder why uh, some memories seem significant to me and I still remember them, although the events aren't significant. So I would like to go back to that and, and quite look at me as a, as a, as a little Is it child. It you you want to shadow yourself not because of your memory but because of your lack of memory is that the idea that there's huge gaps in your memory yeah. like i don't remember anything do you remember who you were do you have a sense of who you were as a child yeah I like do. do you have a, a pretty strong grasp of like oh this is what i cared about these were my values yeah. this is what i found funny yeah yeah, yeah. i do um i do i spend a lot of time by myself uh I yeah. I played a lot by myself. So I would just imagine things and not imagine things, but uh, yeah, like imaginary life. From, yeah. Creatively imagine yeah. things, not imagine people. Um, no judgment. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I like. I loved planning. I loved building um, houses. Yeah, Legos. Um, were you a Lego person? Or no, what? no. Actually, like like little rooms with wood and. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, like, oh, hold on, I'm very curious about this. Like, you would build the interiors or you would build the internal life of these people who lived in these houses? No, I would take uh, blocks, like concrete blocks, and, and move them around okay. um, in the garden. Yeah. And, like, put them in a corner and start building a house with, with cement. Okay. I would make cement with my hands. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Not recommended. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad for the cuticles. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I built, I, I, I enjoyed doing that. And okay. then, then I started working with wood because <laughs> I needed doors in yeah, yeah. those houses um, that I built. And Do you ever watch those YouTube videos of like people who make uh there's this amazing youtube channel sorry I, it's a tangent but i have to tell you there's an amazing amazing youtube channel that you should look up called primitive primitive building and it's i think it's called Pri primitive construction and it's this guy who lives on this island in the pacific who builds his entire life mm -hmm. using um when he first gets there he has no tools at all and you can watch over like three years he builds a house and like an oven he builds all these amazing things. I'm prepared. To yeah, yeah. I'll, this is going to be that. your next show. This is going to be, it's unbelievable. Okay, yeah. sorry. Keep on going. Be who you are. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed uh, mixing uh, building materials. Okay. Um, so. okay. What do people most misunderstand about your work and, and uh, maybe misunderstand about what Liwan is supposed to be and might be in the future? About my own work? Maybe yeah. that uh, when I well when i tell them i'm a designer so they would tell me show me your abayas for instance is that what people think um yeah yeah at some point really yeah but uh, later or maybe now recently maybe i'm more seen as a furniture designer why would they think you're a furniture designer because i've designed many furniture projects okay uh but yeah does that bother you are you like no it doesn't because um every project is an opportunity yeah. and i really turn it into into my own thinking and my own vision of it yeah um so i would always add concepts to it make it more about um the meaning of, of this shape or this installation i would always work around that yeah yeah okay yeah um last question is outside of your profession 
whose work inspires you? Well, um, I would say maybe mid-century uh, modern designers, um, Pierre Collin, for instance, furniture designer, mm -hmm. uh, I think is very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm so I'm very interested in, in uh, mid-century designers and uh, retro design. Interesting. 70s so, is something, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine yourself getting into uh, into like uh, diving deeper into a specific area of design that you are not into at all right now? Like fast forward 20 years from now, are you building cement, <laughs> cement houses? 3D printing <laughs> yeah. cement. Um, well, I think I'm like right now, I'm looking uh, into um, scents a lot the making of, of sense okay um i enjoy reading um breaking down those um memories i have and breaking down what they smell like and then taking that that scent which is mostly an old perfume someone used to spray and breaking that down into the ingredients i'm into that right now okay uh so i think that would be something that i will maybe look more into the making of perfumes and sense yeah all right i'm going to ask you an, uh, the last question about luan and then i'm going to open it up to see if anyone has any questions in the room the last the last question is it's a, a little sensitive but i'll ask it anyway um what are the ways that luan could fail that you see on the horizon that you're like we have to avoid that we have to avoid that we have to avoid that what are the possible ways that this place could not live up to what you expect then you're like, ah, we got to navigate those those things, you know? Well, I believe the team of Li Wan yeah. is the heart of the project. And um, we were very careful building that up. Um, I was very careful building that up. Yeah. Uh, so I would, I'm happy with, with everyone we is, is who's within the team right now. Uh, and who, who everyone else were collaborating with, but that would be my, that would be uh, what I would see, you know, if something changed with that yeah. at, at the beginning of the project, I might see that as not a good sign yeah. <laughs> to continue with, because it's, it's building this human uh, connections is quite important within a project and within a team. And if um, the, t the team works well, together that's how good ideas come and that's how the how, that's how we transmit that into what, what anything we do it's mm -hmm. it's the passion we lead with and i think that's that's the major thing that that we have and we treasure yeah how does how does Luan uh fit into the broader regional regional uh ecosystem so like you're you're navigating how it fits into the local ecosystem right and trying to figure that out but how does, I guess, the work of Luan, not Luan, the, the building or even uh, the members here, but how do you think it sort of is tied to the sort of broader role that Doha has trying to play in the region uh, uh, more broadly? Like, why is, why, I guess maybe this, this was supposed to be the first question. Why is this even worth doing? Right? Like, it's a, a, strategic a strategic goal from the highest level of leadership, why? Why do you think? I think a lot of good things could happen I mean, out of Liwan. Yeah, um, like what? I like projects, like initiatives. Uh, the main idea behind it, not just to create the community, but also to start different research and curatorial, curatorial uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to to engage uh, designers and creatives in that. So we want to build things from scratch, um, you know, innovative ideas, yeah. uh, original ideas. Um, and I think, I think that's might be what's lacking in, in other places. It's, it's not just about the workshops and, and the learning. It's about um, having the time to sit down and contemplate having the space and the people around you who would help you do that, uh, even if there is no interaction, but you are within this circle and uh, that promotes maybe different thinking or um, 
you know, uh, push those bars to think to think differently yeah. and maybe innovate, um, you know, new ideas, come up with new ideas that could be very successful. Okay. We're, we're hoping to start a lot of things out of Niwan. We want to start um, a product line. Uh, hopefully, there will be a design biennale within QM and um, um, Liwan might be the hub for that. Um, and I think um, Liwan is in the biggest space um, project and space in QM, but I think it has a great, great potential with who we are going to attract into this space. Okay, that's a big question. I want to ask you, end with a small question. And the small question is, what is a small design detail related to this place or in this place? that you notice every time you walk in and it just tickles you. Like you walk in and you're like, I love, like for me, I'll tell you what it was. I was telling Archie, I love the angle of the stairs as you walk down mm -hmm. the 22.5 yeah. uh, degrees, every single one, there's no right angles. They're just like like a quarter of a, a, right, uh, yeah. a right angle, quarter of a right angle, quarter of a right angle, quarter of a right angle, and then you're done. So nice, so gradual. What is the detail that every time you love seeing it just tickles you every time you see it? Well, I have two. Yeah. Uh, one original detail, which is the handles of the windows. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really exist anymore. And this is something that I really wanted to save in the one. Yeah. Uh, the glass as well. Yeah. So original. Uh, another detail is because I'm, I'm very much into the tactile memory. Sure. And we, we kept a lot of that here. The, the doors as well. The door handles of, yeah. the, of the doors are very elementary school yeah 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 so we, we kept that because i i think sometimes you forget about those those things but one once you interact with them sure you remember the struggle maybe uh so that was the first one the door handles of the yeah. window the window handles the wooden handrails this mm. is like these are like my addition like yeah. and i mention them all the time because there's i think it's genius um they I wanted to bring back the the old like you know the, the classrooms the tables were within the chairs were within but we yeah. took away many of the, of them so you don't see wood as much yeah. and I wanted to bring them in in something major that would go around the the school yeah. so I added them to the handrail. I didn't notice them. I will pay attention to them. The other detail that I love is the small little door that Khaled has to sort of go through yeah. <laughs> like that. It's like he paid respect whenever he enters. He, <laughs> he needs to fall down. Sort of dip his like, dip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, Aisha, this was really fun. Um, thanks so much for having me in the space and telling me the history of it. Um, anything else you want to mention before we go? Thank you so much. We're so excited for this collaboration with Afrika. Uh, we're so happy to see, I mean, today marks the first day of our uh, program, I think. I guess, yeah, yeah, it is actually the first day. So it's so nice to see Liwan with with people. Yeah. Um, well, we were honored, honored to be uh, to be part of the first day of public programming. This will be the first of many many conversations with Liwan. So thanks to everybody for joining, and we will see you next time.